Hey everyone, this is Tom with Central Coast Kayaks and Pro Kayak Fishing, and today we're going to do a review of the Hoodoo Kayaks Impulse 135. Great boat, similar to the Impulse 120 and the 105, with a few differences that we'll be pointing out today. The first one, as we go to the very front of the boat, is the shape of its bow. This is what they call a plumb bow, so it's almost straight up and down. So it provides a lot more speed on the water, cuts through the water really nicely. And just up above the bow is your drain plug, your grab handle, your front hatch. And what's unique with Hoodoo kayaks is that they're actually molded into the boat. Oftentimes front hatch, hatches are cut out. Oftentimes there's a bucket in there, but this is actually molded into the boat itself. They give you some repair plastic. They give you the Railblazer style rod holders that come stock with it. And then inside of this tank well, there's also a drain plug. Now the Vibe Kayaks, different company, started giving drain plugs out when they made their kayaks and some Hoodoo followed suit. So those two companies are the only ones that I know of currently that give you the, the scupper plugs for their boats. So that's the front hatch. I wouldn't say it's spacious or huge, but you could put um, probably two Plano boxes in there, maybe um, lunch bag, uh, extra layer of clothing if you need it. Um, just depends on how you pack, but it's not super big and it's not super deep. Lid comes down top, locks in right here with really easily done positive locks. It bounces just a little bit, so if you want to, you could put in some weather stripping right along the edge here, and that would make a nice tight seal. We have not tested this boat yet for waterproofness, but I would imagine there would, this would have water in it, and that's one of the good reasons for having a scupper hole in it to drain that water out. Up along the sides, you've got a gear track. This is the aluminum gear track that they provide. And they also give you the inserts, and these are M6s. So if you had Yak Attack or Yak Gear or Yak Gadget items, you could use a screw, an M6, to go right into there. You would not need the T-nut that you would with the other products. This little plastic cap pops off, and you slide your item right in there. Let's say a, a Yak Attack lock and load base is a good example. As we come into the cockpit area here, this is where your fin drive would go in, and it's just like every end of the fin drive, like Hobie or any of the other impulse boats. This is just the cassette that you drop in if you want to paddle it without the drive. This one pops right out, and the drive pops right back in. Here's your locks, just like any fin drive. But if you notice inside here, there are there are bumps on the side, but there are no foot pegs. So this is basically designed to pad to pedal but you can use your feet up against here in order to paddle. I like this feature in a pedaling kayak because it does allow you to get good purchase with your feet even when you're paddling it through the surf or coming off the beach or heaven forbid something happens to your drive. So I do like that molded in feature. Moving back, we've got two more scupper hole plugs that is and the nice big rectangular hatch. One neat thing about this hatch, like the front hatch, is it's molded in. So once again, there's a scupper plug, a scupper hole, water can drain down there. Um, I've heard this being used as a live well, particularly on uh, freshwater lakes. But there's good rubber gaskets on this hatch, which I really appreciate. And the locking mechanism is pretty stout. A lot of times on hatches, you just have a singular round piece that spins that locks it in. This is two bars with this piece here that locks it in. So it, and then the, both these arms go underneath it as you lock it in as well. So it's locked here and locked on the sides, which should give it a nice tight seal. Coming into the cockpit, we have our uh, seat, which runs on tracks. We don't have the brackets on our seat currently, but those are able to adjust. We've got our rod holders I forgot to point out here. So we've got two in the front and two behind the seat. A small little tackle pocket right here. Then there's the handle, and your steering handle is on the left side only. So it's only left side only steering. Not sure what these guys are. I'll have to talk to Hoodoo about what these threaded inserts are. I think these are going to be for your rod holders 
looks like the right positioning for the act or the um, railblazer rod bases that they give you. And then on the right side is your uphaul line for your rudder, which we'll show you the rudder in just a, a minute. And then behind the seat, there is a little tank well. And under the seat, which is which I find interesting, is there's a round hatch. Now this round hatch, I would expect that this goes into the boat, which it does. So now I can reach into the boat if I need to sponge the water out, run lines in here, if I'm going to put a battery in here. But I would not use this on the water. This is not a storage hatch per se, but it does come with a little bag. So if you did, let's say you wanted to put your battery in there, your aqua battery, wires or, or something else in here, you could do that. But that's going to go underneath your seat and you're really not going to have access to that on the water because your seat's going to be right above it. So with the seat removed, there's a little space behind the seat. This is good for, let's say you want to run a Bixby, you can put your battery back here or, or 3700 Plano box. That goes over the top. That locks in here. Nice option. And a big, big tank well. This is a big tank well. It's not very deep, but it is large, which does allow you to put multiple things in here, such as a fish bag, a big Black Pack Pro ice chest, and maybe a Black Pack Pro 13 by 13 turn this way. You'll see these channels in here, so if you get water on, the, on this back deck, it drains right through here, which is really nice. These are adjustable if you have an Allen wrench, so you can move these in the track if you would like. Or you can take the bungee completely off with just this little hook. Once that comes off, then you can just unthread this and you can use this as a tie down spot so you can get rid of the bungee and or keep it whichever you prefer. So really neat tank well, big, not deep, but large and wide. When we're coming back into the stern of the boat, there is an accessory port. And in the accessory port, you have your steering lines accessible, your uphaul line. And if you wanted to run an anchor trolley or lights, or you have to replace these lines, that's how you would access that through this access port. In front of the access port, or behind the access port, is the handle. And then we get into the rudder. <coughs> the rudder comes stock on this boat, as any pedaling kayak should have a stock rudder. And then there's a cleat that pulls it in, it drops down. Our tension knob here and a pulley wheel. That pulley is really a nice feature for rudders. It takes a lot less tension on the line, it decreases wear and tear. And it's a nice big long blade, much longer than most standard rudders you'll see on boats. It has a little cotter pin here, so you can easily remove this if you like. You can also put on your Bixby motor on the bottom. You just cut this bracket out or the rudder out to fit the bracket. So you can put a Bixby on there if you like. The one thing I did notice though is that your rudder does not come all the way up. So it's not 108 or 270 degree swing. And it's not a 180 degree swing like a gravity rudder. So having it up there is nice. So if you're not using it, it gets out of the way. However, if it's windy, you're gonna put this down anyways. But if you're not using this on a windy day, this could push the stern around you have a little more wind resistance, but that's what you use the rudder for when it's windy. In the back here, you've got a flat stern, so you've got a lot of keel line. And if you look underneath the boat, there are these flat chines that go all the way down, I should say channels of the boat that provide stability, decreases friction on the water, so it allows this boat to be pretty fast. As I said, we haven't paddled it yet or pedaled it yet, but just by the looks of it, it looks like the hull is sleek and fast. The one thing I do note though on the back of the boat, as some other kayaks do have a keel protector or a removable sacrificial piece, this does not have that. So I would probably come in here with some, with a keel protector, there's different brands, that's probably what I would add to the bottom of that boat. Or if I was redesigning it, I would add a sacrificial skid plate to this boat. Because it's so long, it does have a sharp stern, you can see it's just worn away just with one little movement of the boat outside. And over time, you wear that, you'll wear through that, especially if you're doing launch ramps and uh, hard pack stuff that you are dragging the boat. A little drawback would add keel guard to that. That would solve that problem. 
but uh, otherwise really great looking boat similar to a Hobie Revo in terms of its looks will be really interested to see how this boat pedals as well as paddles I think it'll be a good paddling boat I think it'll be a good pedaling boat but we're not sure yet we'll get it out in the ocean and we'll post up a YouTube video for you guys to check it out but this is the Hoodoo Tempest 135 so 13 and a half feet the Impulse 135 from Hoodoo Kayaks looks great not a lot of bells and whistles you don't need it and for $16.99 it's a great deal to get you on the water in a fast pedaling kayak so thank you guys subscribe to our channel we're building it faster putting more cool stuff on there and if there's stuff you'd like to see or have questions email us it's the fastest way to get a hold of us at cckayaks805 at gmail.com thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the water